Today, I have two very special guests from one of Wake County's most beloved groups. The Green Chair Project is a nonprofit organization in Wake County that helps families in need, especially those moving into stable homes, but facing challenges in getting those essential household needs like furniture. So by gathering donated furniture, both used and new, the Green Chair Project supports these families by providing them with furnishings they need for their living space. This effort not only assists families in crisis, transitioning from homelessness, but it also contributes to environmental sustainability by repurposing gently used items instead of sending them off to landfills. It gives these belongings a new lease on life and it gives the recipients a new lease on their stable housing that is so much in need. I'm excited to welcome Ray Marie Shuhai and Margot Huffines to the show. Thank you so much for coming on. We appreciate you being here with us. Thank you for having us. We're delighted to be here. Yeah, we are. Good to see Absolutely. you. So I want to start with you, Ray Marie. You are the brand new CEO and only the second CEO. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I have been in Raleigh for over 30 years now. I graduated from UNC Chapel Hill and came Go to Heels. Raleigh. Go Heels. <laughs> and um, have worked in nonprofits in um, Raleigh for um, off and on during my career. I was a, a banker first and then um, moved from corporate banking into to the nonprofit world and um, was so attracted to Green Cheer's mission. Um, there's comes like this point in your life where you get to do things that um, combine everything in your life that you've done. And so the fact that I have banking experience, have experience with other nonprofits, um, it just really pulls everything that all of my experiences together um, to serve our community through Green Chair. I love that. And Margo, um, I had the opportunity to get to meet with you a couple weeks ago. Right. You're the charity manager. So uh, how did you find Green Chair? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm actually an interior designer mm -hmm. by trade. Uh, and when, uh, but I've always had a heart for community service. So I've always either been on the board of a nonprofit or volunteered at a nonprofit or worked at a nonprofit. And I met Ray Marie years ago through a mutual friend. And there were just a few nonprofits in Raleigh that I always thought their mission and the way they involve the community is such a special thing that I knew that if I ever had the opportunity, I would want to work for one of them. And Green Chair was at the top of my list. Mm -hmm. So I reached out to Ray Marie because I heard that she had had a person on her development team lead, leave, and I asked her if she had anything that I could come on board and help her do. And so from that meeting, it created into the charity position where I oversee and manage uh, the charity event in September, which is our largest annual fundraiser. And in addition to that, I've taken on several other things there and grown to love it. The, the families we serve, the, the team mm -hmm. that we work with, and everybody in the community that's involved with yeah. the Green Chair. Um, it's just been wonderful. Well, and I have to say, um, uh, she, she's d downplaying it a little bit because she basically meets with those of us who are considering donating or trying to figure out how we can get involved in Green Chair. And I think most of you out there listening, if you're in Raleigh, you've probably seen Green Chair somewhere, right? They, their brand is really beautiful. They, um, there are always things going on in our community that support Green Chair, but I didn't really know exactly what Green Chair was until I joined the board of the Realtor Giving network and was on the board with Beth Smoot, who was one of the co-founders of the Green Chair Project. And it wasn't until then that I really started to understand the mission. So tell me a little bit about what is the mission of Green Chair? Well, the mission of Green Chair is it's really simple. It's furnishing homes and changing lives. Um, with the donations we receive from the community, we are a conduit to put those back directly into the hands of the families that yeah. need them. You know, it's funny because, it's not funny, but it's, it's interesting to me because we live in such a bubble. 
in Wake County. Um, you know, we happen to be in one of the you know best economic climates um, in the United States, one of the best housing climates in the United States. And as a child who grew up in poverty and did not have secure housing, um, I, I know what it's like, but a lot of us don't realize the need that's out there. What kind of need are you seeing in the community right now? There are 6,000 children in Wake County that do not have a bed of their own. And that is really something you cannot unhear. No. Um, mm -hmm. 6,000 children, that's one in every 30 in a Wake County classroom. And, and just as you said, with Wake County being one of the wealthiest counties in North Carolina, how can we let that be? Um, and so knowing that with a gift of $250, you can put a child um, in, a, in a safe, warm place place every night um, or a, a baby with a crib. You know, coming from somebody who did not always have a bed, that is an amazing thing. And it sounds so nominal because, you know, we can buy coffees mm -hmm. and spend $250 a month mm -hmm. on that to be able to put a child in a bed where they feel safe. Um, it, it really does change their life. It changes their outlook on things and, and what they believe. So for you, um, how how is green chair how do you see green chair affecting the community in an impactful way well it's it's that's a great question because we we impact the community i feel like from one end to the other yeah. we uh, work with so many partner agencies that refer families to us once they've found secure housing and secure income there's no money left to buy furniture so we we meet the families that are actually affected and and, and get the benefits, receive the benefits of what we do. But we also involve the community by having donations and pillow drives. So we're always asking people, uh, we have a most needed Monday. Monday was most needed lamps. We needed lamps and we didn't have enough lamps. And then we also uh, involve the business community because we love for, for businesses to come and do team building events in our, in our facility and learn more about what we do. We're constantly trying to get our word and our mission out to people because like you people drive by our building or they see our trucks and they're like oh that that's a really interesting sounding thing but they don't know what we do and the number of families that we serve so we feel like we have a wide reach across the community wouldn't you agree i do Ray agree Marie? one of the things that surprised me the most um and this happened during COVID, i had um a donor call me and say, I just want to say thank you for being an organization that we feel comfortable donating to. Mm -hmm. we, we appreciate the work that you're doing and we want to support you. So it's unusual to have a donor thank you for being um, a place that they can support. I agree. And you know, when I think about what you both have just said, and I think about the visuals of my perception of green chair prior to really understanding what it was. And I'm in the real estate business and I'm in the business for looking for opportunities to get involved. We believe that our community has supported us so much that it's our um, our goal to give back to them. It's, it's, it's an honor to do that. And what I love that you both have said is that you give people a hand up not a handout. So tell me a little bit about the process when when you find a family in need and how they walk through your showroom. Um, tell me a little about that. Well, choice and dignity are very important. They're our core values. And so we look for ways to make sure that when a family gets referred to us from one of the hundred agencies, that they have choice in the process of selecting their furniture. So we curate um, vignettes for them to shop from online. Currently, we are still online. Um, and so they have a link to the website and they have between three and five vignettes to choose from, to select from. These vignettes are beautiful. Um, they are curated from the furniture that's been donated. We have designers, volunteers come in and curate the vignettes before we photograph them for families. That is such a beautiful thing. And do they pay something? Most families pay a $200 furnishing mm -hmm. fee, and um, but all the beds are free. Each child receives a bed, and the adults pay a $350 for their bed. So there is a $200 furnishing fee. I think that's so important because I do think that helps in that dignity piece mm -hmm. where they feel like they're not being given something. Because I remember as a child, my mother never wanted to be given anything, mm -hmm. which was a huge problem for us as children. Like she couldn't get past that, and it really crippled 
enabled us because we couldn't go and do it on our own, right. you know? So I love the choice and dignity. I think those are during huge COVID, things. Yeah, during COVID, we, that $200 became a barrier for many families mm -hmm. and Wake County stepped up with their Bridge to Home program. And they are currently providing that $200 fee for families that cannot afford that. Mm -hmm. So we do serve some families that, that absolutely can't afford mm -hmm. that $200. And to your point, that we feel like that that's a, a, a hand up, not a handout. They feel like they've mm -hmm. participated in setting up their home. And, and basically, that covers, because we deliver everything to those families, that covers our delivery um, cost in, in taking all the furnishings to those families and, and delivering and seeing the faces of those children. I mean, that's you can't put a price tag on that. The children that see their beds and their furniture and their sofas and chairs coming in, it's it's priceless. And when it comes into the house, you know, with your delivery, that it would cost more than $200 to deliver that mm -hmm. anyway and set it up. But when you set it up, you're setting the whole bed up, right? You're doing the sheets and the ba yes. basket that yep. they get. Um, and, and you know, when we talk about that we deliver between 20 and 25 families a week, that's mm -hmm. 25 sofas, 25 kitchen tables and chairs, 25 uh, dressers that go out every single week. And it, we um, take the furniture and the beds. Mm -hmm. And then in addition to that, they get uh, boxes of kitchen items. So they have plates and cups and cereal bowls. Uh, a colander, frying pans, pots and pans. In addition to that, they get a bath bundle. So it's their shower curtain, their shower curtain rings, coat hangers, because they might not have coat hangers, towels. And, and so it's just, I have a chill running down my spine because we provide all the essentials to make them successful in their new home. And that's what it's, that's, that's our goal is to make sure that they have a place that they can, um, nurture their children that's safe and that they can live in from here on out. I think that's so important. It's kind of like the air, y'all are kind of like the Airbnb <laughs> set up for uh, like people who are housing before. insecure. <laughs> yes. I think that's awesome yeah. because you've thought of everything and there is so much pride that I imagine that you take from that and seeing a mother whose children haven't had a bed, who has everything that she needs to provide mm -hmm. for those kids within her home, I would imagine is a huge thing. So do you have one story that you can share about that? That she wasn't to pick one. Or <laughs> that's no, no, that's hard. <laughs> I, I do have a. There's so many. Um, mm -hmm. But just recently, we had a homeowner who um, was bringing a recliner back to us, and she said, "I received this as a client of yours." five or six years ago, and I know how popular recliners are. I want you to have this recliner back to give to another family. And so we were able to welcome her in, give her a tour of, of Green Chair, um, and she was like, you know what, I think I would like to volunteer here. Mm -hmm. So to have someone that we served come back, um, bring their furniture back to us to give to another family, and um, then to offer to volunteer with us, it just came full circle for us. Mm -hmm. And there's lots of days that there's tears at Green Chair and they are always happy tears because it's just so emotional to see these families experience in home because of the work that we have done. Mm -hmm. Do you have one, Margo? Um, I think one that's in a, that sticks with my mind because we also help some refugee families mm -hmm. and we had a, a woman from Afghanistan who was actually a judge in Afghanistan mm -hmm. and who fled the country because they had opened up the prison systems and she knew she was now at risk and she left Afghanistan and came here with her daughter and was referred to us I believe by a church mm -hmm. and um, to hear her story of what she went through to get here with nothing after being in a place with means, it was it was just so touching mm -hmm. to me that uh, when she came in and she saw and she she wanted a rocking chair for her daughter, and so we made sure we had a rocking chair, and that seeing that impact, and and and, and it's every day we see it and we hear it every day, and so it's what drives us to get up and go to work the next day and and reach out to people for money because. 
If we don't have enough lamps, if we don't have enough sofas, we buy them. Our trucks don't stop rolling out each week because we don't have enough frying pans. So in addition to the donations that come in, we have to purchase items. And so we get up every day as a, as a development team, and Ray Marie led that development team when she hired me, thinking of how can we reach the community? How can we bring in more money? How can we get more people involved? And so when you love what you do, you don't mind getting up and doing it every day. You know that, you love real estate, you don't mind getting up and doing it every day. I haven't worked a day in my life except for that the, the few minutes that tears roll down my eyes because I'm trying so hard to work something mm -hmm. out. So I completely get it. You know, um, this podcast is sponsored by the Coley Group and you've heard a little bit about the need. 25 sofas, 25 frying pans, 25 tables, 25, more than 25 beds a week that is needed. You know, we are planning to do a drive for all of our clients and our um, sphere of influence to bring their items to a place that is convenient where uh, we can take those directly to Green Chair and make sure they get to good use because I know that all of you out there listening to this have things in your home that you're not using that you're considering donating and we would love to be a part of the facilitation of helping those get to Green Chair and get to the families that you're hearing about. Now, if you're out there and you're thinking about making a move in the triangle, we want to be your go-to real estate team. You can reach us at all of the details below and if you've got comments or anything that you want to share about your experience with Green Chair, we would love for you to go down to the comment section below and let us know how it impacted you or how you were able to provide for someone and what joy that brought to you. Thank you so much for listening today. Um, I want to jump back into the show and I want to talk about um, some of the numbers because when I read through your numbers in preparation for this podcast, I was astounded at the number of people that you serve. So Ray Marie, can you tell us a little bit about what your year's looking like? Last year, um, Gretchen, we served over uh, 1,400 families, 1,436 families received household furnishings from the Green Chair Project. We had budgeted for 1,200 mm -hmm. um, and the need has grown exponentially. So we continue to serve even even when we are um, have exceeded our budget. <laughs> well, that's a testament to the leadership, and that's Absolutely. a testament to you being passionate, getting yep. out there, and yep. and you know fanning the flames to yep. to get donations. And we're excited to be able to help you with that. Well, thank you. In addition to that, we have our Sweeter Dreams program, and we delivered over 1,900 beds. In addition to the families that received beds, and these were primarily children who sleep on the floor received beds um, and that is a bed and a mattress and all the bedding that goes with it and a pillow and those numbers are when you think about that per week that's a lot of beds we deliver and all of our beds are new so that's that's a cost to us mm -hmm. and that's one of the reasons why we have the fundraisers and 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 the other avenues for people to donate because the beds that, that we all deliver are all new. I love that. That's so important, so important. And um, on that note, you've got a fundraiser coming up in the fall. Tell us a little bit about what that is and how we can get everybody involved. Certainly. Yes. Well, Charity is our annual fundraising event. It's our signature event where we involve the design community, um, which gets what Green Chair is. They get what making home is. They understand that how important home is. Mm -hmm. And so they reimagine. We have 12 rooms. We have four vignettes. And then we have 12 to 15 chairs that the designers will um, take items that have been donated to Green Chair and reimagine them and put them um, on display at our event um, in September. It is September the 18th, 18th through the 20th. 20th. Mm -hmm. And um, it will be at the Green Chair Project uh, Thursday afternoon and Friday will be open to the public. And you can, it's a ticketed event. Uh, we have sponsors that will come to our sponsor event on Wednesday night. That's the premiere party mm -hmm. um, where the first first reveal is. Thank you so much for sharing that. I think that's really important for people to see. I have heard of people who have been to that. I have not been to it. I will be there this year because I think we're going to sponsor in some way, shape or form. But um, what lights you up about doing all of this? Because this is work. It, it, I know you're passionate, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, you're getting up every morning and hustling and you mm -hmm. probably don't know exactly how your day is going to go. Right. So what, what, what turns you on about all of this? I can tell you when I leave at the end of the day, we, as you mentioned, we have two trucks that are rolling around Wake County 
every day. And the trucks are generally parked um, at the exit when we when we leave at the end of the day. And so I think of what those trucks have done that day. They have picked up furniture from families that have um, excess or, or redesigning their home and making their homes beautiful. And they've donated their items to us. And that other truck has taken those items and put it directly into the hands of families that need it. So I'm thinking about those 12 to 15 children that are sleeping in their own bed tonight mm -hmm. for the first time. That that mom that has cooked a dinner in her kitchen um, and serving her family at a kitchen table with everyone at the table. Everybody has a chair at the table. How about for you, Margo? Well, I am um, still being in the development end of it, and, but primarily focuses on uh, focusing on charity. I love co involving the community. I love the designers that come in and, and they get to create something for themselves. They're not working for a client, so I get to see their, their creativity come to life. We get to involve the community um, for donations for this event, and then volunteers that come in and help us during the event, and then going uh, after sponsors, meeting with people like you, Gretchen, for the first time, and seeing what you do and how impressive your setup is, and trying to bring you on board to help us make charity even more successful. So uh, my, my excitement is twofold. It's the families and seeing the families and, and knowing that what we've done that day mattered. But it's also looking forward in making Green Chair successful for the whole entire year. I think that's beautiful. And I think you two are so complimentary of each other because we get very deep, different answers from you. But I can tell the energy in this room is palpable. I'm Thank sure you. they can hear it. <laughs> and you can tell how much you love doing what you do for a variety of reasons. and. You know, I will say to those of you out there, if you want to be a part of something that is having a significant impact, you have to get involved with Green Chair. Be a part of one of those 12 to 15 beds that gets delivered every day. There are so many ways for you to volunteer, to give, or to use your influence, yes. which I think is one of the things that we are the most motivated by. And I had this conversation with you, mm -hmm. Margo. We wanna make sure that we use our voice and our influence. We wanna use our money and we wanna use our time. And if we can check those three things off with, with a group or a nonprofit, that is what lights us up. That's what oh, makes us passionate about who we're involved in and or who we're involved with. And so tell everyone, um, Ray Marie, where they can find Green Chair. Green Chair is online at www.greenchair.org mm -hmm. and we are also located at 1853 Capitol Boulevard uh, across from the food bank. If they want to donate furniture, what's the process for that? Just go to the website. You can go to the website in the upper right hand corner. There's a, a link that says donate furniture. They can go online there and schedule a pickup. We are open every day from 10 to 4 for drop offs. So if you have smaller items, you can drop them off. If you have two or more larger items like a kitchen table, a sofa, mm -hmm. chair, one of those items, then we can come pick it up if you're inside Wake County. Now, I want to say that I know that sometimes when you're donating, and I speak from experience, you try to do the easiest route possible, right? So sometimes it's just easy to go drop it off mm -hmm. at, you know, one of the other large thrift stores. That's great. Donate it somewhere. But think through your donations and make sure that you're giving them to someone like a green chair project who is going to use them for good in the community to provide dignity to provide choice and to make sure that they're 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 that that your donation is going to a place that has a significant impact. We are so grateful for both of you being on the show. Thank you so much for being here. This has been an incredible conversation. I'm so excited for you as a listener to get to hear this and you know we kind of think that Raleigh is a pretty special place to live. And the entire um, mission behind the Best of Raleigh is to share with you the people, the businesses, the nonprofits that you need to know and do business with. And we want to be your guide to luxury living in the triangle. So we drop a new show every Friday on Apple, Spotify, and on YouTube. You can find us on all those channels and you will be the one to know about all the people who are impacting the triangle. So click that follow follow button, stay up to date, and we'll see you in the next Best of Raleigh. Yay! Awesome! Oh, you, you are